managing personal belongings after death and cross-country shipping. That's our topic today. We'll get started right after this. When settling a state, sending things cross-country after the death can be overwhelming. There are a number of ways that you can transport personal belongings cross-country after someone has passed away. And which will be most affordable depends on the type of shipping that you want to do and how far that the shipment is going to have to go. Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Kim Ward. I am a certified probate real estate advisor in San Diego, California. And what I do is I help administrators and executives with homes that are in probate. Determining what is the most cost of way to ship property depends on a few variables. And in most cases, there are unique things that are being shipped. And so we have to draft a strategic specific plan to help you get those property across the country. Some of the things that affect the cost of it, of course, are item size. Large items such as couches or uh, large pieces of furniture can be difficult to ship without professional help and some are unsuited for certain types of shipping such as shipping via air freight. Of course, the weight of the personal property affects the cost quite a bit. Heavy furniture or really cumbersome boxes, things that are difficult to move without specialized equipment may restrict how you can ship things via train, bus, plane, or a large shipping company's trucks. Another thing you want to consider is the value of the items. If you have a well-loved couch that you inherited from your brother who passed away, even though you love it, it may not be worth paying all that money to ship it. On the other hand, heirloom furnishings or designer pieces may be well worth the expense. And another thing to consider is the distance that the shipment needs to go. When shipping furniture and large items, the farther it needs to go, limits your ways of being able to ship things and can certainly affect the shipping cost. When it comes to cross-country shipping, cheap should never be your first thought that you want to ship it in the cheapest way possible. If you're looking for cost-effective ways, you know, less expensive ways to ship things across the country, you'll want to ship the personal belongings after you do a lot of research on the companies that offer this type of service. You'll want to find a company that you feel comfortable with and that can definitely help you with your unique shipment. So how can you know what is the best way for you to be able to ship these items and be cost effective? And the most important part, get the items delivered on time and in one piece. Let's unbox some ideas and options that you might want to consider. You could rent a truck or trailer and drive it yourself, but consider that renting a truck or a trailer may seem like the best cost effective way to ship your personal property items. And up front, if you look at just the dollar amount of what it costs to rent that truck or trailer, yeah, it might seem like it's very inexpensive, but consider the following. Let me just tell you a quick story about Rebecca that her uncle had passed away in Oceanside, California, not far from San, it's in San Diego County. And there was a lot of furniture in the house and she wanted to be able to give these furnishings to her family members. She lived in Chicago and so did all of her family members. So Rebecca, she rented a truck and she hired some people to load all of the furnishings, which were not super high end expensive pieces of furniture, but this is what she wanted to do. And that's fine if someone wants to have the items that belong to their loved one, regardless of, of cost, this is the manner in which she chose to ship cross country. So she rented that truck and she drove all those items back to her family members. So what I want to share with you is the true cost of using that type of shipping. You need to consider time. Renting a truck eats into your personal time, of course. This can lead to unpaid time off from work, 
as well as the cost, the daily cost of the rental and if they charge anything extra for all of the miles that you would put onto the vehicle. Gas should be a consideration. Hauling a trailer behind your car is definitely gonna cost more in gas. And as far as a truck, a rental truck, it's going to cost quite a bit in gas to get from San Diego to like Rebecca all the way to Chicago. Lodging, you're going to need to sleep at some point. The United States is much larger than we think it is and traveling cross country, you need several nights minimum of sleeping somewhere. So of course you might make multiple stops to spend the night somewhere that's safe for you to get the rest you need to be able to get back in that truck and drive it cross country. So you may be paying for a hotel, a motel, or even perhaps an Airbnb. And of course you're gonna need to eat. So there's the cost of food. Even with non-perishable snacks in the car, you'll definitely be needing to stop for some meals along the way, and that's a cost. And you may need rental items such as dollies or some type of equipment to hold things in place. You're going to need boxes. You're going to need tape. All those things will add up. And then again, there's hidden fees such as perhaps taxes and environmental fees that a rental company might charge you. And there will also be an added fee. We all should know this, that when we rent a car, if you're one of the drivers is under 25 years of age, there's an extra fee for that. And insurance. Of course, insurance rates will depend on which rental company you happen to rent from. And you might want to consider the insurance that you get or don't get from the company you're renting a truck or trailer from and compare it with the insurance that you have on your personal insurance policies. Here's a pro tip. If you decide that you're going to go in that way, don't forget to check for discounts such as AAA or perhaps some kind of corporate rate discounts on the rentals. Without having professional equipment for loading and unloading the large items, you may run the risk of damaging those personal belongings. Renting a truck may be the perfect idea if you're shipping locally. If you're driving cross country, it might be a viable option if you feel comfortable driving a large vehicle, a truck, long distances, you enjoy road trips, are moving more than one or two pieces of furniture, and if you're actually moving the furniture to your home, that would be versus taking it to several different places across the country. In the case of Rebecca, of course, she was moving the furniture to locally in Chicago for all of her different family members. So that was her best option. Some clients consider shipping containers or pods to be able to have another company ship those items to them. Of course, you'll have to, or you'll have to get someone to help you put those items into the shipping container or the pod. Then that company will load up those shipping containers or pods and drive it to the location that you want it taken to. Of course, that's not gonna be the cheapest or most efficient way of shipping a lot of items, personal belongings after death to your home or to someone else's home that may be a beneficiary. The way that my clients, many of them have wanted to ship things like, oh, a piano. One time there was a roll top desk that was important to a family member. We've shipped TVs and dining room tables, things like that. The best way to do it is through LTL, which is less than a truckload. That has proven to be one of the most cost effective ways, although it is not inexpensive, to ship personal belongings after death. The roll top desk that I was just talking about, I believe it had to go from San Diego to Texas and it cost about a thousand dollars. When I'm helping my clients and many of them are not here in San Diego, but they determine that they do want certain large pieces, then I will go personally to the home and measure the roll top desk, for instance, and then kind of guess its weight. I think this thing weighed about 300 pounds, so I couldn't pick it up. So I googled roll top desks and came up with about 300 pounds. Then I went to the LTL site and input all that information plus photos of the roll top desk. And then they send back to me what the cost would be to take it from their loved one's home and take that personal belonging after death to its destination. So then I get in touch with my client and I say, it's going to be about a thousand dollars to ship this roll top desk 
do I have your permission to schedule that for you? And in that case, they said yes, they wanted that roll top desk and we made it happen. Now, this is not the fastest way because that company is picking up items along its route to take them across the country. So I think it took about three weeks for that roll top desk to go from San Diego to Texas. And then my client was very happy to have had their father's roll top desk. And to make sure that the furnishings do arrive in good condition, the company that I recommend to my clients actually will come and they will box up and they will put shipping blankets on the items and they make sure that they do their best to protect it so that it arrives to the destination without being damaged. And that cost is part of the thousand dollars for that particular roll top desk. So that's a bit about how to ship property across the country. I hope you found it of value. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe and also hit the bell button so you can be notified of my weekly videos that I release once a week all about probate real estate and how to get through that process of your loved ones passing. And remember our goal, just like the shipping company, is that our clients and their personal belongings arrive safe and on time. Thanks for watching.